Shows that make you laugh. Shows that make you think. Music that moves you. It can only be one place. Universal Broadcasting Network. Tune in at ubnradio.com. In the future, talk radio will actually educate, inspire, and make you think. The future is now. Topics and music that affect your life from Universal Broadcasting Network. Tune in at ubnradio.com. Heidi selects all out of the friend zone. Here's to my very special guest, Karina Karsten um, from lovetv.co. Mm. <laughs> Did I just tell you that I was watching it for the last two hours? <laughs> I know everything there is to know. I, mean, I know everything there is to know what men should know about women. But you gave stuff on there that I didn't know. Oh. Ooh, Karina Karsten. Oh, I look forward to hearing what you didn't know. Is Karina looking at the, can, can the camera see Karina? <laughs> oh. So um, while you're watching lovetv.co, I want you to listen to something. Um, there's a big issue that goes on with women and money. And there's a big issue that goes on with and women who try to protect their money from men, but they try to sneak in there and, can I borrow some? <laughs> there's a lot of men nowadays who do that. So, right? Mm. There's a lot, Karina. It happens, and I know it's happening for you. Well, you were in the UK's Million Dollar Matchmaker, so these are millionaires. Now, do millionaires give out money when somebody needs money for rent? I think mm. it depends on the millionaire. Exactly. What I didn't even make that didn't even make sense. <laughs> <laughs> I'm I'm trying to just get to the point that very rarely is it good t good for you to actually loan money to somebody, especially somebody you barely know. So well, right. I I don't think someone you barely know, unless you really are, you know, it's it's either <clears throat> it's either I'm like uh, intimate, <laughs> philanthropic, <laughs> yes, um, because we get pulled, our heartstrings Whoops. get pulled, and and that could be philanthropic with giving someone something on the street that's homeless, or that's different. Is it? It's different. How's it different? It's different because. Mm, okay, for example, uh, I barely knew someone for a few weeks. Yes, and um, he's he's gay, so he, he's not interested in me. However, sometimes I wondered he would never leave me alone. I mean, the guy was around me all the time till like two or four in the morning. I'm like falling asleep. I'm like, you gotta go. <laughs> I was like, you have to go. We were just gonna start doing work together, and then uh, one time he was over, and uh, a friend, another guy friend left, and um, and he said, you know, I, I really gotta go take the care of the situation. I'm just, you know, I'm six hundred dollars short for rent. And then he just stares at me the day before rent's due. I'm like, how do you not know that you're a grown adult? And so I said, you know what? The friends I met you through, I'll give them a call because, you know, I'm going to How throw... long did you know each other? <laughs> just like a month. I mean, I knew him for a few months, but I just started considering maybe I want to work with this guy. But my instincts at first were like, mm. don't. I, it took me a long time to warm up mm. to him because I thought he's clingy, he's needy, mm -hmm. he's the kind of guy you can't get rid of. And there's something about him mm. that I just either don't, tr I don't trust and I don't like. Well, your instincts were... Hello. And I didn't listen. Imagine if he was somebody I actually was intimate with. Then I would be like, Karina, how do you get rid of him? Okay, you tell us how to get him, but how do you get rid of him? Like, you know? Very carefully, very carefully. Right. Just Woo. rewind, rewind. Karina has been on so many shows from UK's Million Dollar Matchmaker, and she has started a new site. It's called lovetv.co, and it is sexy. And it's it's not, it, it's, it's, I love the don't take the nude selfie photos and send them. <laughs> Don't ask us to take yes. right. <laughs> you know, as we know, privacy is really a very thin line these days, and so you know that if you take something, it's going to get out. It really, I mean, it's rarely. Like, I feel sometimes like they rob you or something. But while you watch LoveTV.co, uh, we're going to do. Uh, I, I did an interview earlier today with the senior vice president of Fidelity Investments, mm -hmm. and she was amazing. It's about women and to their money. So uh, we're going to play that for you for just a few minutes, and uh, we're going to continue the second part of her next week because it'll take about a week to absorb, which, you know, to do what she says. But you are going to see huge differences in your finances on how to be smarter with your money 
and how you can be super successful like Karina Karsten and <laughs> Alexandra Tosic, the Senior Vice President of Fidelity Investments. Hit it, Jarvis. Alexandra Tosic is on the phone. She's the Senior Vice President of Fidelity Investments. I have investments with Fidelity, and my family does too, Alexandra. I'm thrilled to hear that. <laughs> so thank you so much for coming on the show. Uh, this is a show to help men and women kind of understand what's really going on inside each other's heads. And, uh, you know, one thing that goes on um, a lot with uh, with women is money and how to handle it. And uh, when do you get involved if you're married? When don't you? And like, say you're, you know, interested in a, in a man. Um, when is it too soon to find out how they handle their money? So. Right. Uh, I know you are the expert in all of this, and this is such a fantastic topic to talk about because a lot of people aren't getting married nowadays or later in life. So, you know, we need to know how to handle the finances. Exactly, exactly. So that's why we undertook this study. So, so essentially, women are gaining a tremendous amount of financial power. So by 2020, they're expected to control $22 trillion in wealth. All right. Woo, you go girls. Mm -hmm. I know. And so it's a, it's because they're they're earning more undergraduate degrees, they're out earning their husbands, and then they're outlasting their husbands. So it's really across the age spectrum. You mean outlasting and as far as the marriage or just in life in general? Life in general. So women outlive men in general five years. So the, an interesting statistic is eighty percent of men die married. 80% of women die single. That's okay. why, you know, you get advice from uh, older women and they say, marry somebody younger mm -hmm. and who, yep. you know, who loves you just a little bit more than you love them <laughs> and who's good with money. But women also go to the doctor probably about five, six, seven times more than men do. This is a fun show. I can already tell this is a fun <laughs> show. That's right. We're not afraid so of shots, okay? <laughs> so Nine out of ten women are going to be solely responsible for their money, either because they outlive their husband or they get divorced. So that's why we undertook this study, to say, are women ready for this? Are they comfortable? Because they're going to have to manage that money. And what we found was women, they're actually very good savers, and they're good investors. So women, when we looked into all our data and the behaviors, women uh, save more across the board. And when they invest, they are just as good as men with a little bit less risk. But the interesting thing was, even though they had good results, they were much, much less confident. So women, 60% of women are worried that they're going to run out of money. And this, I mean, that sounds bad. But when you actually dig into it, it's really bad. So, for example, I was telling my sister this, uh -huh. and I said, you know, many women actually think they're going to be bag ladies. And my sister is a successful attorney. She's like, oh, I, I think I'm going to be a bag oh, lady. Oh, goodness. Oh. <laughs> so, I yeah. mean, lots of women are concerned. I actually was talking to someone earlier who said, you know, the same thing, a very affluent woman. And part of that is this lack of confidence. And the reason women aren't confident, they say, you know, we haven't done the research, we don't have the experience, and we don't know who to talk to. And, yeah, well, especially if you come from a, uh, you know, all of our families have been through some form of a depression where, you know, everything was lost. And then we've had it in the last, you know, 20 years in our economy here in the in the U.S. and then 911. And so there there is a fear that is just, I think, embedded in us. And, uh, you know, I even think women would, would not be make it on the streets as, as easy as men would. So we've got a lot more. I think there's a, you know, we're just more complicated. There's a lot more to us. And yeah, I, I would agree with that. And I think that, you know, but we think that the, the real, there, there's several ways to kind of get over, get over this confidence gap. First is just understanding that women are good savers and are good investors. So that's one of the things we're really trying to get at. Okay. The second is, we do feel like the financial services industry has really, you know, complicated things over time. There's a lot of jargon. There's an abundance of products. And what we're trying to do at Fidelity is really demystify that and boil it down to its essence. And the bottom line is the fundamentals of investing are not that hard. And so we're trying to really convey that and make women understand they absolutely can do that. Okay, do you have, like, uh, uh, the fundamentals that you can whip out of your, your, so, your so confidence? What I would say is one of the best, you know, kind of fundamental things women can do, 
especially women, if you're working outside of the home, most employers have a retirement plan. Get involved in that. Mm -hmm. So if you're not enrolled, enroll, okay, because it's a great way to get started because the money comes right out of your paycheck. Okay, the 401k, right. Freebies. Comes right out of your paycheck, so you hopefully shouldn't feel it too much. It actually helps you on your taxes, okay, because you, you're able to deduct, deduct it or it, it doesn't count in your income. And what's nice is most employers match that. So let's say I'm contributing 3% of mm -hmm. my salary. Many times the employers will match that, let's say 3%. So I get 6% of my salary, and I'm only contributing 3 so it's free money. And then you the can also roll it over into a Fidelity account. You can, you yeah. can, you. I mean, or keep it in the plan. So um, as you're working, you keep it in the plan, and then when you leave the plan, you may want to keep it in the plan. You may want to roll it over. There are all sorts of considerations that we could talk to, uh, talk to someone about that. But the great thing about this is many women actually don't see this as investing. This is absolutely investing, your 401K or 403B. And so that's just a fantastic step to take. And to see that money grow over time is really motivating and empowering. So that would be one thing that we're recommending women take a look at. Number two is we have a site. It's called fidelity.com backslash women and money. It has a lot, oh, of these, great. a lot of these things I'm talking about. So take a look there. And then the third and final thing we're recommending is we have been doing seminars all over the country for women. It's called the Thrive Series of Seminars. There's three different seminars. The first is kind of getting organized and getting your budget. The second is building a plan. The third is um, retirement planning on your own, because back to our first part of the conversation, many women are doing this on their own. Okay, so kind of planning for retirement on your own. These seminars are magical, okay? I've attended a lot of them because what happens is you get all these women in the room. You do not need to be a Fidelity customer, so we're saying come, if you're a Fidelity customer or not, and bring a friend. So all of a sudden you're driving to the, the seminar, you're driving home, you're going to start talking about money. You get in the room, it's all women, and all of a sudden you realize that many women are in the same boat, they don't feel confident, you can ask any question you want, so there's just tons and tons and tons of questions. And what ends up happening is women feel incredibly empowered and motivated coming out of these sessions to really, you know, start or take the next step on their financial journey. Yeah, I actually read something that was in the in one of uh, that Fidelity mailed me with my, you know, my information, and I read it. And I was like, wow, why wasn't I reading these before? Because I just always say to my dad or brothers, hey, what should I do with this, or what should I do with this, or if I do this, will I get this? Is this going to double? Da 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 da. But I'm asking them instead of me actually doing the research because that's what that's what I'm used to. Right. Exactly. You know. But Oh, look, at you've empowered yourself by reading it, and you don't need to ask them. You're just as good as them. You know, you can save, you can invest, so you go. You go, girl. Now, exactly. <laughs> that's right. Uh, women don't really talk about money. I know personally, and this has come up a lot lately, I don't like to talk about my, my money. I don't like to talk about finance. I do not like to talk about my personal finances. <laughs> I do, but she's amazing. We're going to continue uh, part two next week, next Thursday at 6 with Alex Duran. <laughs> Did you just do something to my wine? Oh, that's right. We didn't even drink some. We haven't even had a sip. Alexandra Tosic. She's a senior vice president of Fidelity Investments. I love her. She's so <laughs> funny. And she's. So, I just. we totally clicked. I was like, you're going to be my new best friend in a pocket. Anytime I have a question, I'll call you. <laughs> She's your new app. She's my new... Oh, my God, Alexandra, we just made an app for... You are brilliant. Oh, my gosh. I'm going to take you after the show <laughs> and <laughs> open your mind. <laughs> I'm creative, too, but, you know, let's just cheers. Cheers, so, Heidi. Great, great to see you. You're a beautiful blonde. Oh, it's a blonde and a brunette show. We're like two Barbies. Hi, boys. <laughs> oh, we're so much better than Barbie. Okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> We're smart. <laughs> what could we be? Sassy Sallies. Oh, I'm sorry. Saf sassy, empowered women who are empowering others. That's right. Women who are empowering others. And the other day when I woke up from a nap, I said, it just came, the sip.
we have to sip. Apparently, I'm forgetting to drink the wine after I cheers. Three times now. Three's a charm. Cheers. Cheers. Um, I woke up and I thought, oh, this is how I can explain my show. It's a show about empowering men and women. Duh. I'm like, gosh, why did it take me so long to come up with that? And uh, Karina. You got to the root. You, got, you know what? You're right. I was meditating. I've been meditating a lot. That's beautiful. Mm -hmm. Do you meditate in the morning or the evening or both? Um, I do it actually at night, in the morning, and then sometimes in the day between projects. Nice. Or if I get overwhelmed um, or if somebody bothers me. I get, yeah. You know, I've, I've had a lot of people around me that have uh, sucked my energy and mm. tried to drain me. You know, they either want money or, you know, me or sex. And I don't want to give them either one of them or all, either one of them. So, in, you know, but it's nice to be desired. Yeah, it is. But it would be nice to be desired by the right person. Mm. So, well, meditation actually helps with that. It's coming. I can feel it. And the thing because is, because you're cutting through all yeah. that Maya, all that mental stuff. And you realize that that's not real. You know what? I'll tell you what I've really since I've been this is like a different kind of meditation that's coming upon me because mm -hmm. I'm in a lot of prayer. I'm really spiritual. You wouldn't know it by looking at me because I run around in like skirts and heels and I'm like tee hee, -hee. but I'm in actually, disguise. <laughs> yeah, I'm in disguise. I'm actually really deep. So like even Alexandra was like, oh my god, you're so fun. I'm like, I'm really intelligent, but I like to have fun and I'm naturally free spirited. So uh, you know, that can be misconstrued. Mm -hmm. um, and then I'm a tiger when it comes to, to business. I'm a cougar. I mean, not a cougar. <laughs> Wrong animal. And I'm, the bedroom, I'm, I'm assuming, oh, I'm, oh, I'm as fierce. well, Heidi. As well. Let's cheer to that. Yes. I wasn't going to answer that. I bet you are, too, according to your website well, you and your know, knowledge. I have to know a little bit about what I'm talking about. <laughs> so it's been actually six months to this day that you were on my show last Are you kidding me? Six months to the day? September 5th. Six months. Is that not ironic? Because I woke up this morning and I said, you That's know what? Ironic. I'm going to I'm just going to go ahead and see if you were still in my phone because I had a new phone and I was looking for your emails and they were all disappeared. Some, you know, um, a stalking computer girl got obsessed with me and she went in my computer. A long story. See, you, you don't get that. But I mean, you do get it. But what I'm saying is it's happened. So I couldn't, none of your emails were there. And I was like, oh, I'm going to. And I was like, you know what? It'll come to me. <laughs> After meditation, I was like, oh, it'll just fall in place. After meditation. Yeah. I said, it'll just fall in place. And I slept for 12 hours finally. I finally slept because I was only getting like two hours of sleep. So <laughs> I was like, so anyway, enough about that. What I was saying was um, Karina has, has always been on my mind since I met her. Karina has an energy that's amazing she you were on uk uh million dollar matchmaker you've been on several other shows uh you have started several sites and you have a new project as a matter of fact when i called her today she goes i'm good i started I, and i was like oh my gosh this is brilliant <laughs> so <laughs> so love tv.co i mean this woman thinks out of the box she's innovative she can help you really understand what's going on in your mind or not in your mind and i'd like to introduce karina karsten my thank lovely you. guest. Thank, thank you so much. You. For, it's so lovely to be here. I am so excited. I just feel like so, I feel like I've known you forever. Well, you know what? There's a resonance and there's just this natural affinity and it's so wonderful to actually get to be in your presence. So thank I know because last time I was like, Karina, I really want you to come in. You're like, I will next time. And I was like, here you are. I, I didn't know when I woke up this morning that I would be here this tonight. <laughs> so it's uh, I love I love how the universe delivers yeah. beautiful surprises and spontaneity. So, yes. You just yes. got to be open. Yes. Yay. So, Karina, tell me all about it. You're going to tell us all about LoveTV.co, which love is very TV. Yes, so, it is very sexy. So Love TV has been really um, this, this passion, this desire to really create a network very similar to what the Food Network is to food. Okay. You know, and it's no, a love network. It's a, it's a digital love network. Mm -hmm. It's all about high quality, sophisticated content around love, sex, and intimacy. And who doesn't want to talk about that? Well, you know what? I saw uh, on your site, a lot of guys are actually starting to open up and talk about it, which they used to not. That's right. So we all love to talk about love and intimacy. It's exciting. We, we, You know what? At the end of the day, what you realize is that we all 
think before we get into relationships and before we start having sexual experiences that uh, you know, it's just going to be this, you know, beautiful mm-hmm. experience and that we're going to understand it naturally. And then you start getting your feet wet and you start going in deeper and you realize, wow, like there's so many things I don't know. Yeah. And, and this is a way for you to explore uh, different possibilities for yourself. We say it's not about happy endings. It's about new possibilities. Oh, that's a, that's a new, because yeah, you don't want it to end. Yeah, we don't want to focus on endings because we know that life is a continuum and love is a continuum. So um, I always hate the boxes that you have to check, like single, married, divorced. You know, it's just like we're so much more complex and interesting and diverse than that. And um, I think life and love is about exploring. It's about having a grand adventure and it's about really discovering who you are as a lover. And we realized that there was really no place else that you could go to find that type of content. Right. You can't. Yeah. You, you can't. And, and it's it goes like, to one extreme or the other. It's either you have to sacrifice to be in love and there's no intimacy and it's not, you know, sexual or sexy and you have to make sacrifices. It's not a real love connection or it's like, you know, 50 shades of gray without seeing him the next day. Ooh, <laughs> I just rhymed. <laughs> That's you well, know. you know, it's interesting because um, last year I was um, asked by a peer to to talk about Fifty Shades of Grey and I hadn't read the book at this point and um, I said well let me read the book and this is for a potential TED talk and I started exploring the book and, and I started crafting a talk and the more I got down that road and I, I had certain opinions about it I realized there's a lot of people out there that have really liked Fifty yeah. Shades of Grey. Yeah. A hundred million people bought that the book. book. Okay. A yeah. hundred yeah. million people. I thought it was 150. Or maybe. It's... It was a hundred million the last time okay. I checked. Wow. So I said, I don't know that I need to have a particular opinion about this. I want to have a conversation with people who like Fifty Shades of Grey. And so that's what we set out to do when we launched Love TV is we wanted to make content that was really riffing off of um, Fifty Shades of Grey. So we created Fifty Shades of Ice Cream. I saw that. It's like vanilla sex or chocolate sex. It's like, what if we swirl them? Do do we have that clip? Can we play it? Can we play it? We don't... you didn't get oh it's in there i know it is we it's gotta there. play it swirly yes play yeah. swirly flavor yes. <laughs> do you swirl i do do you swirl of course cheers to swirling swirl <laughs> <laughs> are we pl- according to 50 shades of gray there are two Kinds of sex. Vanilla sex. May I kiss you? And chocolate sex. Vanilla sex is for nice people. And chocolate sex is for naughty people. Nice people? Naughty people. Nice people, naughty people. But what if there was swirly flavor? Introducing swirly flavor sex. For real people. It's hot. So do you swirl? That would be a good question. Yeah, do you swirl? Is that one of the questions you ask somebody? Absolutely. Did you ask that to your husband? Are you vanilla? Or are you chocolate? Or can but see, you people swirl? might think, oh, yeah, baby, I'm chocolate. When actually, it is, that's not what it, it's about. It's about your <laughs> your energy, right? <laughs> well, it's also about... I strawberry. Not. It's also about, like, okay, well, maybe I tend to be more vanilla, or I tend to be oh. more chocolate, but what if I could step outside of my comfort zone and add a little bit of the other end? 
What then? Well, you have to trust someone to do that because some people cannot get out of that zone. They can't, or with certain people. You know, and the good, what, what Karina and I were talking about earlier is you, you have instincts. Trust the instincts. If you're like, Absolutely. I don't know what it is, but there's something I like about this person, and you're naturally drawn to him, and it, it just, or her, and it feels right, go with it. You know what I mean? So go with it. If you're having an instinct like, I don't know what it is, everything looks good, but it doesn't feel right. You know, right. you really have to trust your instincts. And usually it's in the first five minutes that you know, and then your mind kicks in and it says, OK, well, let me give this some, you know, time. Mm -hmm. And then you start to go down the list and there's nothing wrong with that because <laughs> yeah. then you're just really affirming whether your instinct is right or not. But what happens is then you talk yourself into something. Or out of it. Or out of it. Uh -huh. And and you, you know, spend months and months in a cycle it, that you could have predicted in five months. Five minutes. Five minutes. And you can learn those five minutes on her site, which is lovetv.co. Actually, it's a it's a channel. It's it a is channel. A, it is a channel. It is a digital network. And it the intent behind it is really about uh, elevating and enriching love, sex, and intimacy as a very important part of our life. And that opens us up to really new ideas, uh, new adventures, new possibilities for ourselves. Okay, well, let's go down. Um, let's go down this things that weird, weird ways that couples say, I love you. Mm -hmm. I mean, the video is funny. I don't know why I'm not in any of these videos. I'm, it, where's well, mine? Well, we can put you in one okay. very soon. Oh, good. <laughs> very soon. <laughs> but it's not It's not like one of those selfie videos. It's <laughs> We have clothes on. Well, most of them. Um, because uh, Some. We, we, yes, yeah, some. But we do, there's Just some. On the side, it talks about why you don't want to send nude photos. So, but well, let's do one at a time because some people have ADD like me, and I'll just be like, choo, choo, choo. And I'll be like, well, that's good because there's something for you at, frankly, whatever mood you're in and whatever stage you're in in the kind of continuum yeah. of your love experience. There's something for you. Yeah, it's like there's on there. It says, is it is it is it wrong to compliment a woman on her breast? I mean, th these things. So, can we go down one by one? <laughs> Go down as many as you want. Now, I'm okay. happy to share with you more. Okay. So, yeah, share with me more, but really quick. Okay, so let's go down the breast. I mean, let's start with the breast. <laughs> I mean, I How many sips have you had, Heidi? <laughs> <laughs> You're going to make the male members of your team blush. I didn't mean that. <laughs> See, that's how I get in trouble is I say things I don't mean. And it is, it's innocent and natural. And then I'm like, oops. <laughs> tee -hee. So that's why I giggled. But let's start with the is it is it ever right or wrong to compliment a woman on her breast? Well, of course. Is it ever wrong? Of course. Oh. Because when I was thinking about that, I heard the word never. So it's always right. But I'm totally <laughs> wrong on that. So, so when is it right and when is it not right for the male listeners? Because this is a show to help men understand what women want and what they're doing wrong. And one of them is just going ahead and grabbing some woman's breast when you shouldn't be doing that. Well, I think... You have to be suave about it. <laughs> <laughs> I, th I think it also depends on, you know, where you are in your relationship, for uh -huh. sure. Uh, I think intent is very important. In, I think where it really crosses the line of really uh, being a good thing, being a positive thing, is when you're seeing the the woman in your life, the woman in front of you, as basically a piece of meat that you know you you have sized them up, and they are breast, they are butts, they are eyes, they are cheeks, they are young, they are old. You know, it's all of those things. It's like, when you... I'm a breast guy. I'm a butt guy. Yeah, it's like, it's... you know, come on. Really, it's like that, um, it's inhuman. It's inhumane. And it, and it really starts to, and a, a woman does not feel good receiving any kind of compliment or any kind of suggestive, like, uh, Show me your tits, baby. <laughs> it's like, what the hell? You know, it's not, not spring break nice, in college. Nice breasts, nice bosom. You know, none of that. You know, it's and and that's not how you're going to get her. You know, to be honest with you, that's really how you're going to do the exact opposite. Harass. I call that harassment. Harassment and a lot of alonement with your hand mint. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying. Well. Yeah. Um, 
<laughs> Back you know, to the breast. What's interesting? <laughs> what's interesting is that um, I think women uh, like to enhance uh, their breast with the tops that they wear. You know, it stems back to corsets and uh, really bringing every, everything, <laughs> everything all in up and, and out, out. <laughs> and yeah. just um, and I think there's something what. <laughs> First of all, it, it represents a sense of fertility and voluptuousness and and I and think freedom and free spirit and fun and that's what men love. Yes. That is one of the elements that both men and women love is the fun and the free without the barriers of being self-conscious or and uh, also just really enjoying your experience of being in a female form. And there's something so great about, oh, I love being in the female body. Every day before a show. And I, there's more men that like I that, I dance too. to music before a show. <laughs> what was that? There's more men who like what? Well, I would like to be in a female body, too. <gasps> oh, there's so many. <laughs> But, you know, it is pretty great. It it is pretty great. But you get it. Why, though? You understand why? We're so fun. There's so much to us. He, the engineer, is pointing him to himself. He's like, I'd love to have my own set of breasts here. (laughs) Fondle him, baby. I would imagine a guy would probably play with themselves all day long in the mirror if he was a woman. I'm sorry for so many women. I'm sorry. Well, <laughs> let's just say that I actually think there's an interesting experience going on. I think that we're all androgynous. You know, we may be oh. in a male form mm. or a female form, but you have masculinity inside of you. And you have femininity inside of you. And we actually <laughs> like to act those sides of ourselves out. It makes us feel whole. It makes us feel stronger and more, you know, like really free. Yeah, you know, sometimes you come ac- across a guy and you're like, you know, shut up. Leave me alone. Get away from me. And they're like, and they like you more. And I'm like, oh, my gosh, this is never he's not going to listen. And I, you know, it's just to the point where it's like the guy's in touch with his feminine side. And there's my masculine side coming out. And he wants to be spanked. He wants the reversal of Fifty Shades of Grey. Well, he <laughs> he is really attracted to your masculinity. Oh, well, I didn't really know I had that much, but I do have balls it's, you can't see. <laughs> it's there. It's there. And it's strong. And, and I think that's that's the thing is that I think. We are seeing examples of how this is playing out culturally. Mm-hmm. Is that you know you wake up in one day and and you see someone that you've admired as a sports star your whole life, and he wants to you know take on more of a feminine body, and I think that these are out picturing uh, out pictures of what we deeply actually are, which is androgynous. But some people want to express it actually physically they want to shift their body type like many want to wear many want to wear their girlfriend's panties i've heard of that before well and 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 that's a one girlfriend said she went into her drawer and she kept saying why are my pant my panties stretched Mm. and she finally figured out she held it up and she's like oh my god and it was funny because she there had these rules like that's so interesting they live together they lived together and she didn't know and, and they had he had this weird rule where he would he would bolt lock the door and she didn't have the key so he, she literally had to call her text to get in for him to open the door probably so he could take the panties off and put them in the drawer and put everything back in place literally well and, i i actually think that there is there is room for that kind of play and exploration if you are comfortable with your own feminine and masculine self what happens is it becomes threatening when you are so identified as a woman with your feminine mm-hmm. and you want your man to be so identified with your masculine yeah. that you, you think that absolutely this is the end of the world but if you actually open up to hey we have both inside of us and this is just opening up potentiality that we could have more fun with and i don't want anyone with. wearing my panties though <laughs> So I, I'm a germaphobe, okay? And I don't want people touching my panties or my bras. Okay, and... okay. Well, maybe not that far. But Heidi, let me tell you something. In Indonesia. I don't want to hear it. I'm just kidding. In Indonesia. Okay. Ooh, Indonesia. Indonesia. Uh-huh. In, even up until, uh, it probably still happening today. In, in native country, native cultures, 
maybe it's Indonesia, maybe it's um, Native Hawaiian, maybe it's Native Americans, because this has happened all over the world, is that the people that actually carried mm -hmm. a strong masculine and feminine internally, they were actually seen as the shaman. They were seen as the person who could connect to oh, the I other get that. worlds. I totally get that. Much easier. And I think that this is our one of our divine rights. So anyway. it is. You know, and, and men used to wear G strings in those islands in the islands. Exactly. Didn't they? They let they their still do. They, they and they always had nice rear ends. With the muscle is just like mm, you just want to, you know, like a bicep, but right. on the butt. And it's and sexy. It, you just grab it. You know, sorry. It is sexy. But it's different in the culture. I think it's sexier than boxers. When they're wearing the, your pink, yes, it, it is. Yes, I prefer um, a towel. But um, I'm sorry. towels are good. <laughs> I'm not going to go into detail. Okay? How many zips have you had? <laughs> Just five. No, but listen, it's different when guys wearing your, you know, your yes pink yes lacy yes. g-string panties from yes. Victoria's Secret. The shaman over in Indonesia would not be wearing pink lacy. I don't know about that. Have you seen one? Okay, let's not go there. Let's go back to the breast. Back to the breast. We're going to the breast. <laughs> where are we now? Where, where are we next? Now? <laughs> next. Well, let me do. Let me, let me. <laughs> let's not do the guys in panties anymore. Okay. Well, let's talk about falling in love. Yes. Oh, let's do that. Let's do that intimacy thing where you have to stare yes. in each other's eyes for four minutes, and that does work. Yes. So we we launched our first a love TV show. Okay. Um, this last month, and what we're doing is we are covering in very short, short shows. We're talking ninety second shows. Okay. We're covering something that's very relevant, like topically relevant in current affairs. So one of the articles that has gotten a lot of coverage lately is this article um, about falling in love, like this scientist put two people in his lab that had never met each other and he asked them to ask each other 36 questions this was on th your site yes okay 36 questions that would in keep them increasingly becoming more intimate mm -hmm. with each other so can you give some of those 36 questions you have to go to love tv dot i have it right here to I, i'm them. addicted to your site by the way it's very. I addictive. thought I, I, Tony said, you know, somebody's running a little late today, and I'm like, well, I was stuck on Gower for 20 minutes. <laughs> I was watching your site also, so I did. I'm sorry, I was. I, it was exciting. I love the 30. I love 36 questions, and then the and then the to have the, someone fall in love with uh -huh, you, and then the the other section where it's about what men like, and then the other section where it's about the nude photos. So it was just going on and on, and I was all intrigued. And then the Fifty Shades of Ice Cream. Do you and feel a little minty today? And there's another part, which is they stared into each other's yeah. eyes for four minutes. Why is it four minutes? Because it takes a certain amount of time to allow yourself to surrender mm -hmm. to being seen, number one. Trusting someone. Yeah, to let somebody in because when, like, we're staring at each mm -hmm. other. And we're pretty comfortable with intimacy, you yeah. and I. So, but with someone else sitting in this chair... They might be squirming a little bit or, yeah. you know, uncomfortable. And it's like, oh, I don't really want to look at you in the eyes. But when two people that never meet, I'm have not never blinking. met, mm -hmm. look at each other. And this could, you could do this with someone you're dating or even your husband or your your wife. I think that's how you can tell if somebody is open and available. That's right. Right? If they look at, there's some guys, when they talk, they look at the floor. They look around. Or they're looking around. Yeah. But can they look at you and can they look at you for a sustained period of time? Right. I mean, your eye, we're talking your eyes. Your Make sure it's got to be your eyes. And and you can feel if someone actually is receiving you. Mm -hmm. And it's powerful. And all of a sudden, if they are, your heart just totally opens up and you feel love. That's how mm -hmm. and how this this experiment I'm all smiling this, I'm like, exactly <laughs> how this experiment worked and people fall, fell in love some of these people that had never met were married six months later it's on your site is that amazing yes and i saw like they just stared at each other and then the one the one girl the one funny the funny part of it she's like where do i know you from 
you're the guy at school that da, 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 da. this isn't going to work. <laughs> and it was, it's really funny. But I mean, that's like the opposite. That's what I was going to say. What if you're like, I don't know if I like what I'm, what I'm receiving or if, you know what I mean? That's right. But there are most of the time, if you are interested in someone and you do feel some form of connection right away, you are going to want to see if it can go further. Yes. And so you should sit down and not stare at each other like, like, you know, that kind of stare it's it's a connection it's a a very it's a very relaxed open connection where you actually you know let someone see you and you you know want to see them so right did i say that right right and i you are so good at intimacy you are yes am i what is what's going on in your love life oh no we're gonna dissect heidi let me get my panties i'm just kidding (laughs) i'm just kidding (laughs) I don't know where that came from. I think the the wine is making me. You know, let's just go with it. Um, what's going on with my love life? Well, I'm extremely, extremely picky. I have been proposed to uh, five times, and I said oh. yes once when I didn't really want to marry him. And that was again. It was just I was bored in my life, and I thought, well, it's time for me to get married. So that was a mistake. Um, and I, you know, it was a really awful breakup. Mm. And it was when I was at XM in DC. Mm. And unfortunately, he worked there in the engineering department, and he was very jealous of my career Mm. of my success and popularity there so Mm. he would actually try to come in the studio and like pick fights with me and I was like get out and then I thank god that I was just like I the only reason why I actually did it is because my very best friend met him and she said I really like him for you and I said no I don't but she's like it's time for you to get married Mm. and I was like but I don't it's not the one you know and she's like well you should try you're always blocking guys out well I think it's probably because I mean I wasn't attracting the right guys because I was so involved with my career yeah. that I didn't want anybody to interrupt the process because I had these these weird plans where it was like okay at this you know I'm doing this for this many years and then I'll go ahead and add this and then I'll start doing TV yeah. and then I'll get married and then I'll have children yeah. so I like had a structure but yeah. the problem was is that like you get into that pattern and you you don't know when the person's going to come you don't know when one of your you soulmates never know. you don't know when you, that you connection you don't know when the universe is going to deliver and that there special has person been so many there has been I so I can imagine you're a catch you. thank you that's so nice but you totally are but I'm not a catch when I wasn't open I mean I was but they didn't know it because I would let them in and then I would be like well I'm not ready to get married so let me that's time to get rid of them I broke so many hearts they they, they called me Heidi heartbreaker heartbreaker Aww. Heidi yeah I lived in seven different states for a radio and I really did fall in love with some people wow. I really did there were a few of them that were really really deep and it was a real, real love connection. Mm. But I just was like, how am I going to make it work when they live there and they won't, mm. they won't move to L.A.? How am I going to do my life? My family's mm. in L.A. also. So it's kind of like, and then I come here and I'm like, well, I really got to focus on my career. And L.A. is, a, is a, a bunch of weirdos. I hate to say it, but you're not meeting. I met my husband here. Okay. I, that's, I, okay. Not all of them. Okay. Yeah. I'm sure you did. There's probably yes. some really great guys. There are some amazing guys. You, uh, again. But did you see how way- picky, did you see what I already, I said, like I stereotyped them all. Do you see how picky I am? Well, so I was going to say, this was, this was you I know. shutting yourself off. To I know. This amazing love affair that you're going <laughs> to have now. I, I feel it's coming though. I actually have this yes. feeling. I feel it. It's really strange. It is. It's it's kind of a You're ripe. I'm ripe for the picking. You are ripe <laughs> I, for love. Yes. For amazing for love. Yeah. And that's the thing is that, you know, that's what I feel it there's a just this incredible vacuum for people where you 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 dream of it, you feel like I'm supposed to experience love because we are love beings. Mm -hmm. We are totally about love. And at the end of our lives, the things we're going to focus on is who did we love? How did we love? We're going to be thinking about the memories. We're going to. Yes. And you know what's funny is I love so much. There are times when I'm when I sit there and I'm like, I miss my daddy. I miss my dad. I miss my brothers. I miss. And then I start thinking about that. I'm like, oh, I love him so much. And it's like I'm my mom. I'm like, I have a mom. I have a mom that is so wonderful. I have a father that's so unbelievably amazing. I have so much love. 
in my life. I've been so blessed. And That's I awesome. love so much that there are times when I've gotten in a relationship where the guy has taken it for granted. Mm. And then it gets to the point where I'm finally done. And when I'm done, there's no way I can go back. I'm drained. There's nothing left mm. to me. I have, I have used up all my energy. Mm. And that has happened. So that's also just me, you know, kind of being um, um, naive to think you could change someone or picking the wrong person because I subconsciously don't want to marry them because I don't want them to interfere with the career. And I have I have gotten so deep that I've like, oh, that's it. Because I always thought I'm, I'm in a man's world. I'm in a man's world. And I feel like you have to really be focused and guarded because men in the industry will just they'll eat you that's up. another thing that's shutting it down for you you have yes. got to lift that the invisible wall up well they already envision you know envision me naked you know so at that point it's like but you're envisioning them naked too no i'm not yes you are. i have not <laughs> uh, there, <laughs> let me tell you something come on I at least one i've only envisioned so many men naked and I've never envisioned somebody I work with naked unless I'm interested in them. And it's only been somebody who really was a real connection and not a boss or something like that. So you have. Um, <laughs> somebody my age, yeah. <laughs> somebody my age, yeah. But let's go back to your yes. site. We really have to get this out yes. there. I feel... And like us on Facebook. Like on Facebook. You know, is Facebook still really going strong? Oh, or, my God. It is really going strong. Because I sometimes hear it's going to go out and sometimes no, 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 not. No, no, no. It's, and then, it's, it's, it's awesome. So like me on Facebook, too. What's your Facebook? Real Love TV. R-E-A-L. Real Love TV. Right. I, I, I watched your mouth when you said that. <laughs> your lips look sexy. They, my I drifted away You're, from her eyes. <laughs> so sorry good thing it wasn't on your breast See, you're really in touch with your masculinity right now awesome i am i swear there's like i'm like a guy in a woman's body but i'm straight and you know sometimes i think i have a ding 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 a lingy down there a little well, bing bong. you know sorry. you're an empowered woman and you're looking for an empowered yeah. partner and and really that at the end of the day is what we're focused on at love tv is that you actually come to our site and you don't feel like I've got to take a shower like you've watched you know something like uh um and <laughs> or you don't feel like you just went to the doctor you know and it's like you've had a clinical exam oh no you feel juicy oh, you feel, I feel inspired you feel amazing and you feel why do you think I'm so spicy on? right now I watched your site for a whole hour and I went through the ice creams and the flavors and then I went down to his ding ding his little bing bong I and mean, some of them are big I mean not that you can see it on there but there's a description that explains to women uh you know if you're uh, you know um an inexper inexperienced in the area of what men oftentimes like um you will learn on there and it just it spells it right out for you it's like a tutorial you just do exactly what it says right you do and you, it's, do. you do and you get you get tips you get entertainment we're all about focused content that is all about High quality love, sex, and intimacy. I am so just you're gonna have an empowered experience. Yeah, you really do. And there's so much on here. Like I even texted you. I'm like, oh, here's one that's called "Stop Taking Selfies, Nudies," because <laughs> you are so about that. Have you taken any nudies lately? I had clothes on. Oh wait, those aren't nudies. No, but the reason why you don't now is because the, these guys are sharing people's nude photos. You don't share girls' nude photos when they send them to you, girls. This is why you never shoot your face. Everything is from the neck down. OK, because that way, you know, it, it's, they don't know it's you unless you have a tattoo or birthmark. You don't know. It could be well, at a certain angle. Well, you know angle. what? This is this is my take on it, is that really what we are trying to get to is what is truly nude and raw mm -hmm. between us. Right. But then you don't share that with someone. No, you go to the external and the external is just, yeah, it's titillating for five seconds, but everybody has seen a new body. I'm sorry. We all have. And what's really scary, what's really edgy is this, the connection, mm -hmm. the rawness, the vulnerability. Is that why? The je ne sais quoi. Uh, je ne sais quoi. Je parle un peu français. Uh, je parle français. Uh, ooh. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> Wait. So is that why people love to go? We, the show's wrapping up, and I have to do my sponsor reads. But is that why women? I mean, uh, people like to go to these 
you know, one night stand websites. Don't ever go on a dating site, by the way. You don't need to. Just go to Home Depot or a yoga class, okay? No, really. Dating sites do work for certain people. All right. We're not going to spank Heidi because I said something you didn't agree with. No. She's going to whip out her whip. It's like, whoo, there's Karina's 50 shades of gray. They can work for you. (laughs) So, but yeah, I mean, I think that's why a lot of men will want to just see you after 11 when it's dark. And then they go before the morning because well, that's they're not. not a date. They're, no, but it's because they're afraid of the intimacy. Well, I don't know if it's afraid of the intimacy. They don't want intimacy. That's a certain type that is not looking for intimacy. They are looking for sex. Right. So you need to know that that when don't think that that's going to turn into intimacy or sex because it's not on a rare, rare occasion. I wouldn't go down that path that's, if you really want a relationship. It's, yeah, and it also you know if. The, it's a show, you know, friends with benefits. It's like, hello, um, most of the time it's not going to go back that way. And you need to be aware of that. You do. You you know, I think we all have different, different tracks and we all can go down different paths and try them. But at the end of the day, you have to know what you really want. And if you really want a relationship, then you need to really focus on having I a felt quality experience. When I watched when I looked at, when I watched your site, when yes. I watched lovetv.co, yes. that I was like, "Oh, I really do know what I want." But this actually makes me be even more capable of being vulnerable with saying what I want Beautiful. and having it be okay. Because a lot of the time you can say to somebody, um, you know, I want this and they don't want the same thing and you're like, "Oh," and you shut down. You're like, oh, I feel stupid for saying that. But it's like, oh, okay, it's just not the right person for you at the time or whatever. And you don't even need to give a second thought to it. You have right. to have enough self-confidence to be like, I don't care if you're interested in me. I don't care if you're, That's you just right. have to be okay with yourself. Because you're amazing. And, yeah. you, and you deserve an amazing experience. Listen to how they talk to their mothers. That's a big thing. Listen. And, and how they treat other women. Are they courteous? Just waitresses Mm -hmm. you know these little things start to really communicate very fast if they're a quality ready for a relationship do they have a dog that's a good man if he has a dog or a cat or a fish responsibility oh there you go you know what that's true because they always say non you know people who aren't responsible responsibility says a lot about if a person is really available for relationship yeah, right. That's why if you you go to the dog park, why don't see you don't need the dating sites. Just go to the dog park, go run around you town. You can do dating sites and they can pay off. Okay, I'm not going to say anything bad. Do you have a dating site too or you're not telling me about? I do oh i'm so sorry you didn't tell me that part well then just smack my booty all right here's here's the shades of gray i'm just kidding what's the site called um that's sacred love dating oh that's right okay well you have sacred love uh dot com dot com and that one is a site to really help you be figure out what's blocking you from being intimate yes and that has all kinds of right. tools and that's tips. what we talked about last time so sacredlove.com and that one's amazing i did that one too and maybe that's why i'm so able to be uh vulnerable and, in- and intimate and connect is because well, I think you, I think you've been working on it, and I think you, uh, you are ripe. You are so ripe. Well, this is Heidi Selexa, and I'm ripe, <laughs> ripe and sexy and juicy. Okay, wait. Let me do my sponsor. I got to talk about my sponsors, Karina. You are so amazing, Karina. Uh, Karina Carson. You have to go. Just go there. Just check it out. It's LoveTV.co. I didn't want to leave it, and. Um, you know, and I don't have a tendency to get addicted to things that I don't like. So I like this. And I'm, I'm really, really amazed and grateful um, that you were just like, yes, I'm coming on your show. We're going to tell the world how to be intimate. Let's start by not taking the clothes off, looking in the eyes. Raw, Four baby. Seconds. Raw. Right. And guys, don't be afraid of it because everybody has a fear of intimacy. Everybody does. And everybody thinks that they're, everybody puts out an image that they're cool. Like you see someone, you're like, oh, they have it all together. It's like, you know, they have their flaws too. And just be yourself. If you're yourself, the world will love you. That's right. Right? And, you know, I have a sponsor that I love. He's, his name is Dr. Craig Thede, and he's an oral surgeon. And if you have any kind of teeth needs, like say you're insecure, you have a crooked teeth, tooth or a broken tooth, or mm. you, you want your teeth wider, teeth in women and women and men, are it's a huge thing. Like 50 to 70 percent of, uh, you know, men immediately notice a woman's teeth first. It's not necessarily 
the body parts mm. and it's not really their eyes it's actually the teeth that's why when you smile look at smile <laughs> it's just so it's so engaging you have great teeth oh thank you so do you thank you and so if you want to have great teeth well because i have dr craig Thede as my oral surgeon <laughs> I only had one surgery. Uh, I brush and floss like 10 times a day. Mm -hmm. Okay, I floss twice. But uh, so he's really amazing. And he also does any kind of surgery from the neck up. And he does cleft surgeries. People fly from all over mm. the world. You, he can do an entire mouth in an hour. I mean, a day. And he does one tooth in an hour. I mean, you could, you have it made. The guy's amazing. He'll also, he's a, your own personal doc in your POC. You can, he, you can literally call him any time of the day and you'll get him. He'll call or he'll call you right back. It's not going to be some service. It's not going to be like, uh, you know, somebody's, you know, uh, assistant, you know, whatever. It's going to be him himself. Mm. So Dr. Craig Thede, go to SoCalOralSurgery.com. That's S-O-C-A-L-O-R-A-L-S-U-R-G-E-R-Y.com. And we have Renee Lynn from, she's amazing, AgeIntervention.com. She does my, she gives me 24 karat gold facials. And like little mini facelifts. Not that oh I need one, gosh. but it basically like really tightens your, it's like it works out your muscles in your face. Mm. And um, I would like to give you one. And I would like to give somebody who tweets about it. Let's have them tweet. What should we have them tweet? Because I want to pick a winner to give the 24 karat gold facial to. Uh, her name is Renee Lynn, www.ageintervention.com. She's an age interventionist. She does every mm. celebrity out there. Mm. And uh, and you can tell the difference between somebody mm. who has great skin and who mm. doesn't have Botox mm. as opposed to somebody who does. Mm. And she's amazing. Her, she's fantastic. Everything's organic and natural. Mm. She's super organic. So. Fabulous. Right. So, you know, let's glow. So what should we have them tweet? Why don't you tweet me um, uh, 24 karat gold facial. Hi, Heidi and Karina. The first person who does that, we are going to give you a free 24 karat gold facial from Renee Lynn from ageinterventionist.com. Thank you, Karina Karsten from lovetv.co. And my door is open to you anytime. I would uh, like for you to be a regular on the show because uh, you, are, you are just lovely. Well, so are You're you. You're beautiful, sexy, smart, and successful. And that is something that all men should aspire to want and all women should aspire to be so thank you and you are one too thank i'm you. heidi selexa and you are watching and listening out of the friend zone bye see you next week heidi selexa out of the friend zone